we seek to reimagine a way of moving in the world where humans are not the only beings that matter. An entanglement of human and non-human, fauna and flora, elements and forces of nature. An imaginary of interspecies and other others that conjure fresh futures, rebirth history and complicate the present. Entanglement is messy. We must find another relationship to nature. I think that this concept interspecies is really important because, I mean, for Aboriginal people, we have kinship, which is, you know, structures that connect species, that connect ecologies, connect patterns in nature that then organise our relationality to these things. So much of Western culture's philosophical premise is based on like Descartes' detachment from the land. You know, the reality of life is that life is for the living and Indigenous peoples have been able to survive for 80,000 years. The reason we were able to survive so long is because our culture has a philosophical premise that everything is interconnected. Indigenous knowledge is the key to survival and the future. I think that people are actually starting to realise that Western culture, it can be very extractive and that, you know, capitalism is failing us. We explore mythological tales, mystical figures and liminal forms. We call on the uncanny to create future pasts by layering the real, hyperreal, fantastic and fake. The post-human recognises imperfectibility and disunity. Having the ability to fluidly change perspectives and manifest oneself through different identities. I've often described myself as an outsider amongst outsiders and, and since the beginning of my practice uh, I've looked at the outsider experience or the other, often it's a marginalised or vilified identity, it's the them in the them and us, the perception, the assumption that I don't belong, this is an ongoing experience that I've had from having a politicised identity, that Muslim identifying name, Abdul Abdullah. With my work at the convent, I've chosen the, the title Interloper because it talks about that trespasser, this fox, this introduced species that's here and present but unwelcome. And in the work, it's clearly trespassing on a, on a, on a farm in the same way that the fox is a, is a predator. What subverts that imagery is that you've got this fox that's having quite an intimate engagement and nurturing engagement with these animals. And more, I think about through our responsibilities as people and my responsibility as an artist, we should be determined to make it better than how we found it. And I hope that the work in the show communicates that. We give voice to the collective memory of species and spaces, the animated and inanimate, historic here and hereafter. An ethics of the encounter encourages more sensitivity to alternative, more than human timescales, disrupting the linear concept of time imposed by colonialism. We question the scientific revolution that seeks to master nature and remake the earth as an object for human use, while casting ourselves as actors in a story of continual progress. Icarus is the story of the young god who was told not to fly too close to the sun. He had wings of wax. But he flew too near the sun and the wings melted and he fell into the sea and drowned. So it's an image of, of certainly of extraordinary invention, of extraordinary power 
and then of incredible overreach and ego. Uh, it, it's an interesting image for space travel. That sense of humans being in space is I think what people largely like to think of when they're thinking of species and other species. But I think that the idea of being of, of us and interspecies is so much closer. Like the long history of pre-colonial Australia, there is such a strong understanding of being of the land, with the land. And I think that's where that, that strong history comes back in to support us at a time when we're in, in such disarray and in such dismay uh, because of our lack of connection. I think that the, the mycelium that enables plants to talk to each other, it's a very lovely idea, I think, connectedness and communication amongst plants. It's a kind of a bacterial connectedness. That bacteria is also in us and we're only starting to learn about its influence on us and our well-being. And I think that's probably more akin to my understanding of what art is. That sense of a, a poetic other way of relating or other poetic possibilities of relating. Interspecies and other others lived and alive. A connected world of all beings in awe of the wondrous beauty and complexity of our coexistence. Welcome to the imaginary.